Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the PG Podcast. My name is Pastor Sharo. I'm the pastor of Hope NYC Church and I host this video blog and podcast every single week. Thank you for being here. If you're brand new to this channel, I promise you, you're gonna love it, especially if you're a woman of God. And if you are a regular, thank you for being a supporter. Thank you for subscribing and sharing this podcast with someone else. Today, I wanna introduce you to your worst enemy. I wanna introduce you to the person who is the reason why you don't do what you wanna do, why you're not the success that you could be, why you're not making the amount of money that you could be making, and why your life isn't as fulfilled as you always dreamed it would be because there is someone that's causing all of this to happen. But today I'm gonna introduce you to that person so you can fix it, you can kick them out, and you can make sure that you live your life to the fullest. So stay tuned if you wanna find out who that is. So let me start by telling you this story. When I was a little girl and um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life because that for some reason was one of those questions I would always ask. Um, what do I see myself doing when I'm a grown up? And so sometimes I would imagine myself being a pilot and sometimes I would imagine myself being a doctor and sometimes I would imagine myself being a preacher. And maybe, and this is, I don't know if I've ever told anybody this story in its entirety, but of all the things that I could have been, besides preaching the gospel, maybe being a doctor would have been the one I wanted to do. But something inside of me told me I couldn't do that. So when I was in high school in Trinidad at uh, 14 about 14 years of age you get to choose whether you'd go into arts or you'd go into sciences or you'd pursue something like you know um, a natural science or biological science future and so the smartest kids really generally chose a science pathway I on the other hand didn't choose that I automatically veered over into arts or into you know, other kinds of um, studies and not into science. But you wanna know something? It's not because I couldn't qualify. I had some of the best grades. I certainly could have been in science if I wanted to be. In fact, there were friends of mine who went into science classes and didn't have grades like I did. But do you know why I didn't go into science? Because something convinced me that I couldn't do it. That my grades weren't good enough and that I would be rejected. So instead of even applying for sciences, I just took the easy way out and went into arts without even trying. And then I decided to make up my own story about why I didn't do science. And I said, I couldn't stand the sight of blood. And so it became my story for all my life that I didn't become a doctor because I couldn't stand the sight of blood. Until recently, I heard my dad tell somebody that I fainted at the sight of blood because that's the story I assume that people learned of me because of the way I told my story. The truth is I've never fainted at the sight of blood. I've wiped up blood from many people, family members. My brother had a nosebleed. I was the one that could clean it up and make sure he was okay. And even to this day, my memory for things that are medical, it's pretty impressive because I'm interested in it and I like it. But I never pursued it because something had convinced me even at an early age that I wasn't good enough. Do you know that today, there are so many things that you could do, but there is someone convincing you that you can't do those things. And one of the things that that person always tells you is that you just are not good enough. Especially for those of you who wanna preach the gospel, for those of you who have a message to share with the whole world, one of the things that the enemy uses to stop us, or one of the devices that stops us, is that statement, you are not good enough. So I told you I was going to introduce you to the enemy of your future and the enemy of your excellence. You know who that is? Nope, it's not Satan. It's you. It's just you. You and the voice that's inside of you that tells yourself all day long that you're not as good as other people who are doing the thing that you want to do. Maybe you disqualify yourself because of your own mind, maybe because of your education, because of 
you see that the people who do what you want to do are so brave and they're bold and, and maybe they're beautiful and maybe they have all this, this backing and, and you're just nobody in the middle of nowhere. So somebody tells you you're not capable. And the truth is that is a lie. You are 100% capable of pursuing whatever it is your passion looks like. Today, at my age, I know that medicine was not God's calling for my life. And what I'm doing is exactly what I was called to do. But when I remember the reason that I didn't pursue it, I know that that would have been a mistake. All roads would have led me back to being the preacher that I am because I found my calling in this. I know it's where I'm meant to be, but the path that got me here was one that started with a coward's choice. So today I want to help you. I want to help you get past the objections that you give yourself that stop you from being great and being all that God has called you to be. Because you know what I realized? I realized that we get so much in our own way that we don't do what we are meant to do. I preached a sermon on Sunday about Samson and God saying that Samson was... He was called to, to begin to free the people from the Philistines. He was called and ordained from his mother's womb to do this, but he didn't do it. He couldn't do it because of one thing after the other. He got in his own way all the time. So today I want to help you because I believe that you are the biggest obstacle in your own way of becoming exactly who you were meant to be on the earth. And I want to help you get there. You know why I said that? Even if I could do medicine now, it wouldn't be the, the call in my life at this point in time. Because Pastor Kurt, those of you who know Pastor Kurt, that's my husband. And he went to medical school at the age of 40. Four, zero. Yep. He went to medical school at 40 because the Lord gave him a dream on his 40th birthday that he was a doctor. At that time, he was a steel maker. But at 40, he decided to go and pursue that passion. Today, he is a physician. But he did it long after people thought that that was a viable profession for him. So he is evidence and proof that it is never too late to pursue whatever it is that God put in your spirit. But what if he had self-talk, an internal self-talk that said, you're not good enough. You're too old for that. Your memory doesn't work like a 21-year-old anymore. You, you will be laughed at, or your teachers won't take you seriously, or you'll never get a match, or you'll never get an internship. How many things could he have faced? I think about that sometimes. How many of us would have been able to pursue that despite all of those objections that come one after the other and say, you know what? I have my mind set on a goal. I am going to make it happen. And he did it. He finished it. And he is proof that if you could shut down the negative voices that arise within yourself, it is the first step to being able to accomplish anything at any age that the Lord gives you a passion for. So what are some of the objections? Today I want to speak especially to those of you who are called to do something for the kingdom of God. I want to talk about a couple of things maybe that you're facing today that stops you from sharing the gospel with somebody, of, of opening your own YouTube channel and becoming a, a Christian influencer, of having your own voice on social media or in a Bible study or whatever capacity at your job, the things that stop you from doing that. And we've already talked about that first objection, which is I'm not good enough. If I sound nasal today, the, um, the Japanese cherry blossoms out there are killing my sinuses. So yesterday I had this crazy harebrained idea to drive home from church with all the windows down and my music blasting, singing at the top of my lungs. It was cool while I did it, but yesterday evening, I paid the price. I'm telling you, I've never had such a bad allergy attack before, and yesterday, it happened like that. Girl, it was bad. My nose was running, and I couldn't stop it. It was crazy. I've never had allergies this bad before. Today, it's, and while I'm recording this, it's a full 24 hours, and I still am congested. So, the experience was wonderful. The price I'm paying, woo! So these are some of the objections that I've heard over the past few years. I've been in ministry now for over 30 years, 
right? And that's ridiculous to think about it. And I've, and that means in a teaching or preaching capacity for 30 years. That's longer than many people have been alive. And so over the years, I've met people and known people that are supposed to be great voices on the earth to be doing things that change the whole world and the lives of thousands of women and men. And there are people I have heard with a powerful voice, people whose lives I've spoken into and said, you were supposed to preach the gospel and then I see them doing none of that. I see them settle for a mediocre life that's comfortable, which might be everything you read about in a storybook and dreamed of, but it's nothing for the kingdom of God. And I think what a waste. But then I think about what are the reasons why they gave up on a dream? What are the reasons why they gave up on the call like Samson did? What are the reasons why they would have turned to other things instead? And the I'm not good enough, of course, is the most important thing I hear all the time. The second thing I hear is that there, there's nobody that wants to hear what I have to say. Or there's nobody who'll want to listen to me. Or there's nobody who will want to see what I produce. There's nobody who will want my product. There's nobody who's going to like my art, my work, my book. And I don't do it, Pastor. I don't share because who will want to listen to me? That's the objection that I hear a lot. I'm going to speak to you right now and tell you from the bottom of my heart that people want to hear you. I remember once I was invited to preach at this conference with very, very popular people. I was the only what I would consider a nobody in the whole room. These people had mega churches. I'm talking thousands of people known all over the world, authors and speakers and motivational people with followings of hundreds of thousands of people. And here am I, nobody with no followers, barely a Facebook account, just, you know, in a little church somewhere and I'm one of the speakers and I'm shaking in my boots because I know there's nobody who wants to hear what I have to say. And I've pretty much convinced myself that there's nobody who wants to hear what I have to say. So I do the worst possible thing. I find somebody else's work, somebody very famous and popular. And I listen to it and I plagiarize it and I write it over in my own words, and I preach their sermon because I knew it was a good one, and I knew it was the word of God, and it went over like a lead balloon, and it was the worst day of my life, and I hated myself afterwards, but I know why I did it. I did it because I felt like nobody would want to hear what I had to say. And I went into a season after that time of just doubting and, and feeling like a fraud and a failure because I was a copycat and, and I never, never wanted to do that, but I didn't trust the voice of God in me to be able to deliver anything that was worth sharing. But that day after I felt that way, I decided that I would never, ever doubt that God could speak through me again and sometimes and I remember the very next time after that when I preached I did I vowed to myself I wouldn't watch a YouTube video I wouldn't read another book besides the Bible I would study and I would prepare my sermons straight out of the word of God with zero references and I preached the simplest sermon that a third grader would would listen to and it was so amazing and people got saved and people came and said how much it touched their lives and blessed them. I want to know something else. That's funny. People still refer to that particular sermon. And the Lord taught me a very valuable lesson today. The minute I start thinking that I have something that people want, then I forget that I need God every hour. That he will show up every time that I need to deliver his word and speak his word to me. It's the most beautiful thing about being in the kingdom of God and trying to produce something that is worthy of the kingdom of God and it is from God himself. He is the one who gives you what he wants to say. You get to say it in the style of yourself. You get to say it with your own stories and your own opinions and your own personality thrown in. It is the most beautiful thing. And may I just tell you, people want what you can deliver they want to hear you they want to see you there is somebody that needs to see your work 
and read your work and hear your words. I promise you. So you have to, to take that voice out of your head that says nobody will want to see or hear or read anything I produce. Push it out of your mind. It is not of God. That's you and the enemy is giving you fuel for that. Another thing people tell me all the time is that the market is saturated. There are too many women preachers out there. The world doesn't need another woman preacher. I mean, if you flip through Instagram, everybody is a prophetess. Everybody is a preacher. And, and, and well, telling yourself, well, I'll never be as great as Sarah Jakes Roberts or Priscilla Shira or, or Joyce Meyer or Paula White or name them, but they're all over the place and they already have the market cornered. And you're thinking there's no room for a nobody or another girl or, you know, and, and I know those are all um, some of the older women and there are lots of young preachers as well. And, um, and you're thinking there's no room for another preacher, another preacher girl. You listen to this preacher girl. There's always room for you. The market is not saturated. And this is not a market. You're not trying to sell something. You are trying to share something. And if you go into this in order to make a whole bunch of money, you're going in for the wrong reasons anyway. When you get into the kingdom and you become a voice for the Lord, you're not trying to get in front of 100 million people. You're not trying to make a million dollars. You're not trying to be famous. We are trying to make him famous, to spread his gospel, to save souls, and to teach our sisters the things that God has shared with us. So push that thought out of your head, the thought that says, there is no room for me. It is a lie. Scratch it off the list. You can say, well, Pastor Shower, you're already on Instagram. I can't go on Instagram. Girl, you can go too. You can do this. You can absolutely do your own podcast, your own blog, your own video blog, and you can kill it. Because there is room for you. There is room for each and every one of us. I'll tell you a story. I, um, you don't have to say, I'll tell you a story. I just I have to always preface it like that. So this Saturday, I was at a meeting and I met another female pastor. And apparently, she is less than a couple miles from me. Her church is right on the same boulevard that I'm on. I had no idea. I had never heard her name. Nobody ever... Maybe if, if I heard it in passing, I completely forgot. I did not know her church was on the end of our boulevard, but she knew me. And so we met at this meeting and I introduced myself. And then somebody said, I really thought she was a random lady at the event. And then somebody introduced me and said to me, this lady opened up the doors for women in her nation for the gospel. And I was thinking, she did? I didn't know that. They say, yeah, this lady, um, she preached the gospel when it wasn't even a thing, uh, that only men would preach the gospel. She was one of the first women speakers in our nation. And I was like, wow, what an honor. And I didn't even know her. So I was excited to be introduced to her. And I went up to her and I said, how, how can I not know you? And she said, I know you. I know you very well. And I was like, you do? How do you know me? And she's like, well, I've heard of your church and, and stuff like that. I said, well, that's, that's wonderful. And, and, and the conversation was very uh, strange sometimes, a little bit disjointed. I was trying to find common ground and it wasn't coming that easy. And then I said, I feel like we should know each other. And then she said this. She said, I really like your floats. And I realized she was talking about my parade. We have a, a huge Christmas parade, my church does, every single year at Christmas time down our boulevard. And so I asked her, I said, have you ever been to it? Because we've had it, we've had it eight or nine times already. She said, no, I've never come to it. But I, I see it on, on um, social media every year. And my heart broke because I'm like, well, we are right there. And I said to her, I said, let me tell you something. Your church should be in that parade. Your church should be in that parade with a banner that advertises your church. And she looked at me like, are you serious? And I said to her, sis, there are enough people in this city for every church to be packed 
all of us. I want you to be in the parade. I want you to be on a float. I want your whole church to be represented with the name of your church on the float. Okay, so we're doing this. And, and I could just feel the the years of walls just break down because this is my heart. And if you are a preacher woman, if you are a girl that, that preaches the gospel, if you are a PG, that means you don't even have a pulpit, but you just have a message. I want you to know that I am on your team. I'm here. We advertise the anthology, the book that's coming out with the stories of the women of God. This is your, your opportunity to be published in this Preacher Girl publication that has some of the most amazing stories of women of God all over this world. I open it up for you to be a part of it and to let your story and your voice be heard. How many of you took advantage of that? The other day, I sent out a, a, a huge invitation for, for anybody to become a part of the Preacher Girl Online Summit. 10,000 people register for that summit every year. And I gave you the opportunity to let your voice be heard and let your message be shared. How many of you talked yourself out of applying? How many of you thought nobody would want to hear me? Or the market is already saturated by great women? or I'm just not good enough. Well, today I hope you're gonna take the opportunity and you're gonna apply. Hundreds of women applied, but did you? Do you believe that your story is worth telling? And that's the fourth objection and the last one I wanna deal with today that some women give me. They say, I don't have a testimony. I don't have anything powerful like, you know, God didn't save me out of prostitution and, and God didn't heal me from cancer and, and God didn't, do any of those things for me because I, I was born in a Christian home or whatever your story is. You're like, I don't have a powerful story to tell, honey. Your story is powerful. Your story is powerful. If you were preserved from the time you were born and you were blessed to have a loving mother and a father that took care of you and you 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 oh, and your marriage is intact and your children are are, are kind citizens. What a story to tell about the goodness of God. Every one of us has a story. Every one of us has a message. The woman at the well has a message. Mary Magdalene had a message. Everyone, Mary the mother of Jesus had a message. All of us can tell the story of Jesus through our own eyes. So don't ever let the I don't have a testimony or I don't have anything people would want to hear or my, my background or I have nothing to write about or that's not viable and that's not true. There is a listener. There is a son and a daughter who needs to hear what you have to say and they need to hear what the father has to say through you. And through your medium, through the avenue that God has given you to preach the gospel. One of my beautiful friends who owns the Everbe brand of cosmetics, she is telling her story through lip butter and eyeliner. What a beautiful concept to be able to say, you gaze into the eyes of Jesus Every time you look in the mirror, you're looking into a reflection of someone who's created in the image and the likeness of God. What an immense way to tell the story. And there is a place for every single one of you. So woman of God, preacher girl, wherever you are. And I want you to be proud of being a preacher girl. You know what a preacher girl really is? I want to tell you something. A preacher girl is somebody who knows I have a message. I've got something to say and it's all about God. And there's nobody in the world that can tell me that I'm not valid, that I cannot preach this gospel. That's, there's a bonus then, I guess, since I said it already. Some of you won't preach because you're scared that God is gonna hate you for sharing the gospel. Because somebody convinced you that your place in the church is to shut up and sit down. And you're scared that God is going to send you straight to hell for telling somebody that there is one way to God and it is through Christ Jesus. Daughter of God, I don't know how you're not going to share the truth. When I get a sale, all right, if I go down the road and something I like is 80% off, you think I'm going to stock up for myself and not tell my friends? Impossible. 
I'm coming back straight to this office and I'm telling every girl I see here, you gotta go now, you gotta buy it now. It's usually $100, it's 10 bucks, it's 20 bucks today. And I'm getting all of them to go buy it. Why? Because it's the best news. And I can't help but share it. Christ is my best news. Being saved from a life of destruction and, and eternal hell is my best news. And I will share it. And I must tell it. And I will preach it. And I will teach it. I will teach it to men and women and animals and anybody that wants to hear. And if the humans don't want to hear, then I'll teach it to the rocks because they'll cry out. That's what a preacher girl really is. A preacher girl is somebody who's not ashamed to say, I preach. It's what I do because what I have to say and the one that I love is worth speaking about. So, welcome to your worst enemy. <laughs> you, the only person that stands in the way of you becoming and doing and achieving what you were meant to be. That means becoming everything that God ordained you to be. That means being a millionaire if that's what God has put a passion in your heart for to serve the kingdom financially. That means having the career or the occupation that you want that could give you the platform that you need to share the gospel. That means having the amount of people that you influence for the kingdom of God. You notice how everything comes back to the kingdom? Because that's my heart. That's what I believe most of all. That if it's God's will, it's God's bill. And that's not just financially. That's emotionally. That's spiritually. That's physically. In every way, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I hope this meant something to you. I hope that you're motivated right now to get up and change the way you speak to yourself, to change the things that are your core beliefs about yourself, to begin to tell yourself that what you have to say is worth saying and worth making and worth creating and worth putting out into the earth because there is room for it because God made you, you for that reason. Don't you ever, ever forget that if God called you, no one can uncall you. Because you don't need a pulpit. You just need a message. Preacher Girl, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please share it with someone. Like it, subscribe to this channel, and join me back next week right here on PGTV.